Black holes have captured our collective imagination for decades. But what are these mysterious enigmas and how do they form? From Hollywood to history, the black hole is probably one of the most misunderstood aspects of our universe. Put bluntly with a mastery only the titan himself, Albert Einstein, could conjure up. Black holes are where God divided by zero. Okay, so probably everyone's favorite space subject, black holes, because they're... You said it. <laughs> That's right. They're mind-blowing and fascinating, and everyone knows the term, but I think most people don't quite understand exactly what it is. Yeah, people have all kinds of wild ideas about what they actually are. <laughs> a very massive star, probably at least 8 to 15 times, if not more, massive than our sun, when it dies, it goes supernova. Giant explosion. Right. And sometimes what's left behind is a black hole. It essentially like imploded on itself. Yeah, that's what happens with these things. They start to shrink because of the pull of the gravity, because essentially when the star explodes, it blows away everything and leaves the heaviest part of the atomic structure. It leaves the neutrons. And then you have this really, really dense thing that has a very high gravity and it starts to pull in on itself. And as it collapses, the gravity gets stronger and stronger as this object gets smaller. You know, when we think of a black hole, we think of it as, you know, like a, a drain, yeah, kind of. Drain. That's the concept that people have. It's like a drain that you go into, and that's not it at all. Right. It's not it. It's really a single point that has an incredibly high gravitational pull, mm. and that's it. That's it. And we call it a black hole because not even light can escape from it, so we can't see it. But we know they're there based on their interaction with surrounding visible matter. For instance, even our mass, supermassive black hole at the center of our Milky Way galaxy, called Sagittarius A, they can study it based on its effects that it has on visible matter around it, the stars and them acting all sporadically. You can come to the conclusion, based on the stats and the math, that there is a supermassive black hole at the center of our galaxy, as are most, if not all, galaxies. If you remember the film Interstellar? Yes. That film had great depictions of how a nearby event horizon could disturb a nearby planet. Yeah. So we saw all kinds of weird bending and folding and tidal action, you know, along with the time dilation, as it's called, the shifts mm -hmm. in our perception of time, that all result from this incredible pull of gravity from nearby black holes. Black hole. It's a lot of weird shit happens near a black hole. I'm not sure I get it. I'm still not <laughs> I sure. I'm still confused about Time that. Time can be manipulated. It can. And you wouldn't think that it could be manipulated, but massive objects like black holes yep. can manipulate both time and light. It's hard for us to even imagine what that kind of gravity is like. Yeah. You know, because we experience gravity in all kinds of ways here on the planet that makes sense to us and, are, and we're used to. And again, you know, we go back to this idea of what happens, what happens to you if you get too close to a black hole? We see all kinds of really interesting effects like this idea of what's called spaghettification. Where an, option, an object that gets very close to the event horizon begins to stretch out and it becomes long and thin like a string of spaghetti. Right. But the time change for that string of spaghetti is also very weird. Yeah. Because for some portion of it, time goes on forever, but for a different portion, time still moves in a way. So basically, if my feet fall in first, they're gonna start to get spaghettified before the rest of me, but they're also experiencing time at a different rate than my head is. Yes. That's just trippy. I would die just from that. Like, I just give up. It's odd, it's <laughs> really give weird. Up now. Theoretically, the last things to exist in the universe before it completely fizzles out would be black holes because what is known as dark energy, which makes up most of the universe, will rip everything apart. So only 4% of all the matter we see in the universe is visible matter. Right. And then you have like 25-ish percent dark matter, and then the rest 73-ish percent is dark, dark energy. energy. And so when you think of how deadly and scary black holes are, Dark energy still kicks her ass. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> It'll still rip them apart. Absolutely. Yeah. Again, that thing about the matter, yeah. only 4%. Exactly. 
Exactly. Yeah, I sort of think about the matter as being the leftover residue of some other process that we really don't have much understanding of. It's the, like the biggest unknown about the universe. And since, like you said, they make up most of the universe, like 96%, we don't know 96% of the universe is essentially what it is. It's essentially dark to us. I really wish we could have the opportunity to be at a safe viewing distance when two black holes collide. Yes. Wouldn't that be spectacular? That would be very spectacular. There's a lot of energy that's oh happening in there. Yeah. But there's also tremendous distortion of everything around it just from the intense gravitational pull of these two objects coming together. We detected the collision of two supermassive black holes with an instrument called LIGO. It's uh, one of my favorites. One of totally my favorites getting off too. subject. Laser Interferometer Gravitational Observatory. Wow, that was good. <laughs> I really love these instruments. I think they're so fascinating they with what really they cool. do. You're Just right. so precise. They but are. it's such an energetic event and also happened to be that we proved gravitational waves, which was something that Einstein had predicted a hundred years prior. So correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe those supermassive black holes that collided were about six billion light years away. That means the waves that LIGO detected in 2015 left those black holes before our solar system were born. Yes, right. That's information from the past right there. Yes. That's so cool. <laughs> and so far away that, so the, at that any other energy that they may have released in that collision has long since died out wow. and we can no longer detect it. But as it turns out, those collisions of black holes happen to be very important because they play a role in the development of the early universe. Wow. So rather than them being completely destructive, yeah. <laughs> here's a way in which black holes are really helpful. Very helpful, right? The energy that's dispersed allows us to understand the history of our universe. Exactly. That's amazing. Cool. Mm-hmm. Better than going inside. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Study it from a distance. <laughs>